In this video, we do the basic connecting and programming for a VSD. It is also known as a VFD and simply variable speed drives or variable frequency drives. And so this particular device is, uh, uh, it's been in industry a while. And so at the recording of this video, it's already cemented its place in industry. It is a good product and it can do quite a bit. So I'll open the control panel. And so the purpose of this video is to have a quick look at how to program and operate and use it for a particular purpose. But also I've prepared it uh, to be used on a training panel. So I've got there, it's open and there's some information on the white sticker. I will remove the sticker. And then we can see behind there is a whole lot of uh, connecting points. So that's the panel where you're going to be putting your information in your, your commands. And there we've got, uh, you can't really see, but we'll have a closer look and that all those points um, is important. So there we've got the LAN point, which will take you to a computer for further um, use uh, maybe you want to add a plc to it or further programming and then we can use that so here we've got the schematic diagram and we want to take a better look at this diagram so i will invert it and put some information on it and so the information i'll put on is uh, with regards to how we will look at it from a training point of view so the first thing is going to be um, the connection to the motor, uh, we will have a plug-in connector and the motor can also, you can, it can be asked that it must be connected, hard connected onto the panel in either star or delta. And so furthermore, we want to put a supply onto the VSD itself. This will be done on the front part of the panel. This is just information to guide us. Then we also have to connect the digital inputs to the actual switches and like any other switch you need to have a supply for it and that will be SC in brackets is labels that will be on the panel itself then there's a pot a potentiometer uh, and this is to vary the speed of the motor and this we can do by also using a multimeter A1 is very important which is the wiper on the pot and then the two fixed points is for your supply or the other two connectors. Then we have a stop and start, e-stop and, and stop button. And these buttons um, have a common point. And HC is the common, H1 and H2 is respectively going separately to the stop and e-stop. The last part is the connect uh, so for the fault and that will be between MC and MB according to the drawing on the panel there will also be that but you have to input AO and DC to it this is an example of the panel that we will use that's your plug-in connector with the motor externally connected then we look at the circuit breaker which is right above but its connecting points is at the bottom that can be run out on the panel and the VSD points is live and neutral. Connect the digital input switches, which is labeled. Don't forget the supply, which is SC, and connect it into those toggle switches. The pot, I will add um, another picture in. And here we've got the same information. Use the multimeter on the own skull and find the point where resistance vary, which is the wiper. And then the two fixed points is your supply. So furthermore, we've got the, on the right hand side of the panel, this e-stop and the stop. There's the connection points. And we have, to, we have to connect the fault, which is MC and MB, and then you can find those points as well. So we will actually do a demonstration. Here's some more examples of a panel. So without further ado, uh, this is just me having a panel so I can, you can see there is the, I've already run it out with a, with a multimeter. 
and I found my points so I will take the neutral now from the circuit breaker to the neutral for the VSD and then the live of the circuit breaker into the live of the VSD so the bottom points is actually from the circuit breaker and the top points is what's going and putting power into the VSD so now that I've identified my digital inputs and I will see the D, DI1 will go to SC1 those points are at the bottom and I will just plug them all in from 1 to 6 uh, I can also find my supply which is SC and plug it into where it also says SC for the for the toggle switches itself it's important to note that maybe another panel training panel will have um, you'll have to loop the supply points at the toggle switches but when you when you see it physically see it you will you will know what to do because obviously any switch needs an in and then of course there's out so now I've got my e stop and I want to identify where is my HC H1 and H2 and they will also be labeled e stop and stop so in a normal circuit a circuit diagram for any starter you would have the e stop in series with the stop in series with the overload in this case it's slightly different where it's a command that you actually or an input you put into the VSD so the E stop and stop is sharing a common point which means now it's almost like a parallel connection so I found the HC which is the parallel or the, the loop and I've looped the E stop and the stop and then the po points that's open is then the rest that must happen there so I've connected my e-stop and, and stop buttons and you will find that when the system is running and you press those buttons there's a particular fault that's actually displaying on the VSD screen and so now I want to look and see where's my pot connections so I don't have much left now my pot it will say pot and you have to identify where's A1 there is a description just before as we've mentioned previously in the video and if you can identify A1 then you've done the most and so once A1 is connected the other two points doesn't really matter because it's the end points of the pot doesn't matter which one goes where so we've connected the pot now and then what's left over is the fault connection and that you would find AO and DC and then we can finally get this uh, VSD or this panel on so there's, there's a this panel works where I'm supplying the panel with 230 volts but we're using a three-phase motor here I've got a PDF that I'm just showing you of how to use the panel there's everything on there how the switch points work the parameter list and then an instruction list finally so we will use the instruction list in this case to install some instructions so I will put it onto the panel as I'm in, uh, putting it in default setting so if you go to any job you would find that you need to maybe just do a default setting before you can set it in again to do the same thing and I've got here parameter A1 and you can see there you hit the middle up button to get to parameter until you find parameter and then you can just set the values to move through the the points you have to press the arrow the next next setting we want to in, input is uh, adjust the acceleration time so all of these you can find in the PDF which I will add into the as a link below that you can just download for yourself if you don't have the training manual and again I will just add in my parameters 
The next parameter, prevent overload trip on the ramp down. That's parameter C1-02. You press enter after you've entered everything or parameters. The next parameter would be ramp down overload protection. And again, your verify motor, write the current parameter, which would be E2-01. Put the parameters in and the motor overload settings. L101 motor overload selection. After you've selected all of these, you have to press enter. And again, this video can be played over and over for you to just get used to what to do. So if you make a mistake, you press exit, 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 and you can just start over. And then that will take you to where you need to be. There is a back arrow as well. But that is almost at the point where we can switch over. So there's the motor setting motor above nominal speed. This would be one of the final settings. Increase the value of par parameter E1 dash zero four maximum frequency so this would if you set it to 40 hertz then the maximum will be 40 hertz in this case it's 50 hertz so this motor would run at maximum 50 hertz so again we're changing the frequency um, the motor will slow down or speed up so this has brought us to the end of the setting the parameters that was just a quick overview now i want to run this motor and so we can see the, I'm gonna run this motor in real time. And so I've got all my switches, everything's plugged in. This is the same panel, there's the pot. And so we can see the frequency, 50 Hertz. And if you put the first one on, there the motor will start. You can see on the left, motor starts. And we can see the 50 hertz. Once I change that pot, you will see the motor will also change speed. And you've got this distinct sound like a high-pitched noise or a frequency. But that's absolutely normal. And we can see the progression of... It's very, very slow and smooth how it progresses through the turning of the pot. Again, if I turn it to zero, you will see the motor slowing down completely. As I turn it up, the motor will start ramping up again and it will run to, full, to the speed that I set it. It is very responsive, so as you can imagine, this is what we use in industry now. Um, this is not new technology, it's, it's actually become old technology now. So again, a lot of systems, it's combined, there's more than one VSD, there's PLCs added to it and a lot of other stuff. So I want to do some more other actions with this. The third switch there is set as a fault. So you will see a fault signal on the screen. The fourth one is to reset the fault. So I have to obviously push all the buttons down in order for the fault to be reset. And you can see on top there, it will go back to 50 hertz. If that's not on the screen, the fault is not reset. Let's do this again. Put the fault. Here's the fault. Reset, put everything down, then flip this with switch, switch maybe once or twice and it will reset. Let's start up and do something else. Maybe do the stop buttons. Runs. So you can see it's running. It stops immediately. There's a, and then the signal goes away or the, the message goes away and until we start it again. The e-stop is different. It will keep the message on the screen because the e-stop locks the system. 
So there we can see it stays there until the e-stoppers reset. We push the buttons down and then we can restart the motor again. This would bring us to the end of this video. Thank you so much.